Welcome to another one of my Amiga how-to videos. In this video, we will be setting up a hard drive using the Win UAE emulator for Windows 10. Imagine that you've gone online and found everything you want to load into your Amiga's hard drive. Most of it, if not all of it, is going to be in electronic format rather than physical. The question is, how do you get all that stuff from your Windows PC to a real Amiga hard drive? Well, this video should help you out with that. Using a Windows PC, you set up the drive and install everything you want, then simply take the drive and put it into your Amiga and you are ready to go. And from then on, you can move the drive back to your PC at any time for more file management in the future. Obviously, I can't test this with every configuration, but I have used it in several situations with great success. It also works with SCSI to SD just fine, and I recommend using the solid state media instead of mechanical hard drives because of expected lifespans. The first thing you need is the drive itself. This video assumes that you have already acquired the desired drive for your application. In this example, I am using a compact flash memory card because this is for my CD32. You should also have a way to connect the drive to your Windows PC. In this case, I have a compact flash card reader. This is where using memory cards instead of hard drives is more convenient. After plugging your storage device into the Windows PC, the first thing we need to do is wipe any volume information from it. We do this by using disk part in Windows. Simply press the Windows key and start typing command and click on the command prompt when it appears. Then type disk part in the window and press enter. A new window opens for disk part. We need to verify which device we want to wipe, making 100% sure we are not wiping the wrong drive. Type in list disk and press enter. In this case, I am using an eight gigabyte compact flash card and we can see that it is disk number two at 7647 megabytes. Then type select disk 2 and press enter, followed by detail disk and enter, to be doubly sure we are wiping the correct disk. Next, simply type the word clean and press enter, and in a few seconds all volume information is wiped. From now on, whenever you insert this disk into a Windows PC, Windows will not recognize it and it will ask you to format it, which of course you should cancel. That is it for the disk preparation step. The first thing you need is the Kickstart ROM and Workbench disk images for your desired application. If you only have the physical disks, there are tutorials on how to make images. But the much easier option is to simply buy the Amiga Forever collection. It is not too pricey and includes all the ROM and disk images all the way up to version 3.1. Visit AmigaForever.com for more information. Here we see my Amiga Utilities folder on my PC, where I've collected every utility I might need. These files don't need to be zipped or LHA'd, and in fact it's better if they are not, because space isn't a concern. It would just be a waste of time to have to decompress any of this. You see some DMS and ADF disk images here, but we won't use them here because we want to copy files and folders directly from our PC to the Amiga drive. If you want something from a disk image, load the image in the emulator's floppy drive section as usual. Here is LHA and here WHD loads installer program. Some file system drivers, professional file system, smart file system, and the default fast file system. I can choose which one I want to use during the partitioning step. And of course, here is directory opus, sysinfo, protracker, etc. And just pay attention to where you have stored this folder. After downloading and installing WinUAE, start it. You can see I have lots of configurations from years of using it. Oh, and make sure you run WinUAE as an administrator. You can do this by right-clicking on its icon and selecting the option. 
However, I recommend a more permanent solution so you don't have to do that every time. Right-click the icon, open the Properties dialog, click the Compatibility tab, and check the box Run as Administrator. This way, it will always run as an administrator. Okay, so I haven't loaded any of my configurations, so this is the default, and we will start here. Click the CPU FPU option and select at least a 68030 and JIT. I don't believe you need to match these to your Amiga exactly, so you may as well pick something fast to speed up the process. As we go down the line, however, things become more important. Here you should try to closely match your chipset. I'm setting this up for a CD32, but choosing an A1200 to prove that they don't exactly have to match. They're very similar machines anyway. Because I plan to install Workbench 3.9 on this drive, I am selecting the 3.1 A1200 ROM. For this tutorial, you must select ROM version 2 or newer. And under RAM, select at least 1 meg of chip RAM and give yourself some extra fast RAM. For the floppy disks, do not select any disks yet, but change the speed slider to turbo. Now we need to add hard disks. Click CD and hard drive, and then add directory or archive. I'm just adding that utilities directory from my PC that I showed you. The device name is the drive designation, like DH0, DH1, and the volume label is the name that appears in Workbench under the icon. Pick something unique here. I will enter PC1, and Utilities, then click Select Directory and find your folder. Make sure to uncheck the bootable box and click OK. We will not be adding the Amiga drive yet. Click the Configurations option. We are going to save this configuration as it is right now. Now watch me enter a name that is invalid because it has a slash in the name. Don't use special characters in the name. I didn't happen to notice that it didn't save the configuration just then. From what I can tell, WinUAE's error trapping consists of ignoring erroneous input instead of an error message, and you would do well to remember that. Now that we have <coughs> saved our configuration, we can add our Amiga drive. Go back to CD and Hard Drives, click Add Hard Drive, and select your new Amiga drive from the drop-down. You will notice that it says UNK for Unknown Drive Type, because we wiped the volume information from it earlier. You want this to be Drive 0, and you want to select UAE for the device driver. Many other tutorials show this as being IDE, or Commodore, or SCSI, but I have never gotten it to work unless I selected UAE. Now, before we proceed, let me show you a bug. Select the drive you just made and click Properties. Wasn't this set to zero before? Well, it isn't now, so change it back to zero and click OK. This will happen later in the process, and we will ignore it the second time around. Next, go to Floppy Drives and select a Workbench 2.1 or higher install disk. I am selecting 3.1 for my CD32. For this tutorial, we need to use Commodore's HD Toolbox utility included in the later versions of Workbench. This may not work for every third-party hard drive controller, but I have tried HD Toolbox on a GVP Accelerator hard drive controller with success, and it also works with the Terrible Fire CD32 Accelerator. So it might be worth a shot for your controller. Now we have everything set up for our first boot. Click Start to start the Amiga emulation. Loads pretty fast on that turbo floppy speed. Here you can see the floppy that we booted from and the utilities drive that we added. But notice there is no icon for our new Amiga drive. This is normal. Let us proceed to the next step. Oops, it looks like I had a different name for the utilities drawer in this clip. It should say utilities instead of PC1 based upon what I just showed you. 
Okay, so let's get to HD Toolbox. Instead of opening it right away, we need to change something. Left click it once, hold down the right mouse button, and select Icons Information from the menu. We need to change the SCSI device name to UAEHF.device. Press Enter, then click Save. Now we can open it with a double click and see our new Amiga drive. Click Change Drive Type. I have an old type in here, so we're just going to delete it. And then we're going to click Define New. Click Read Configuration and Continue. So we see that the original programmers for HD Toolbox didn't set the proper variable scope for drives of this size. No matter. Simply press OK and then OK again. Now we need to partition the drive. On this screen we have two equal size partitions and I want to change that. Note that black means selected. I'm going to delete the second partition and resize the first to under 500 megs and name it something I desire. And don't forget to press enter. Now if you wish to keep the default file system, known as the fast file system, you are done with this partition and can create more partitions on this screen very easily. Once finished, just click OK and click Save Changes to Drive. Then you want to skip the next step where I illustrate how to install a different file system and proceed to step 6. However, I do strongly recommend changing the file system. There are two well-known alternatives to the fast file system. Known as Smart File System and Professional File System, they are both good alternatives. It's up to you which one you prefer. The setup is pretty much the same. The main reason I choose using an alternate file system is now that we are dealing with larger drives and more data, the fast file system makes some drive operations painfully slow. However, the fast file system is more robust. Not an issue as much these days because of cheaper backup options and fast installs, like this one you are watching right now. So go find and download your file system of choice and proceed with this tutorial. So back at the partition screen, you just need to check Advanced Options and click Add Update. Then click the Add New File System and type in the path where it can be found. If you remember, I had all three file systems in the parent directory of my Utilities folder. And we mounted the Utilities folder as a drive called Utilities, or PC1. I'm going to use the professional file system, so that's PC1 colon PFS3AIO. Make sure to press Enter, then press OK. On the next dialog, we need to set the DOS type for this file system. For your convenience, I will put all three options up here. Again, don't forget to press enter after typing in a value. So we have a custom file system selected. Let's press OK. And we can see that the International Fast File System is still selected, so we need to click Change. And select it with this toggle. Professional File System, there it is. Regardless of which alternate file system you choose, you need to change this max transfer value to prevent data loading errors. And of course, don't forget to press Enter. Now just repeat this process with any other partitions you wish to create.
You will notice the aforementioned variable scope error is also present in the partition slider. It isn't a concern unless you want to know exactly what size a partition is when it is over about 4 gigs. Most people don't need precision here and can estimate based upon the slider position. Once completed, press OK and Save Changes to Drive. Then click Exit. In the last step, we changed our new drive from a clean wiped drive to an Amiga drive. WinUAE does not know this, however, so proceed as follows. Press F12 to bring up the WinUAE interface and click Quit. Then restart WinUAE. We will select our configuration that we saved and click Load. Now if you remember, we did not save this configuration with a floppy disk inserted, so select one now. And we also did not save it with the new drive. So go to CD and Hard Drives and re-add it. This time notice in the drop-down that it no longer says UNK for unknown type. Rather, it says RDB for rigid disk block. Select it, confirm that it says UAE device, and click Add Hard Drive. Now you can see that WinUAE did indeed change this value to 1 again, but this time leave it as is. It's OK. Now click Start to start the emulator. Once Workbench loads off the floppy, wait a few seconds and your partitions should appear on the desktop. If for some reason they do not, please review the previous steps in this video. In particular, performing the last step properly is crucial. So now we just need to format these drives. Super easy. Just select a drive with one left click, hold down the right mouse button, move up to the menu and select Icons, Format Disk. Name your partition and select Quick Format. Repeat the process with the other partitions. Congratulations, you have a physical disk compatible with the Amiga. And once you install Workbench, you have an Amiga that will boot from it. If you want to install Workbench 2.1 or 3.1, simply continue from this point by starting the installer from the floppy disk. Switch disks when needed. However, I'm going to concentrate on installing Amiga OS 3.9, which is a little tricky. I just have the downloaded version in an ISO CD image format. Now I've had no luck mounting the ISO image of any CD using WinUAE for some reason. The process seems straightforward, so I'm not sure why. But here's a good alternative. I placed the ISO CD image on the desktop and also made a new folder called Amiga OS 3.9. Now what I plan to do is extract the ISO image into this folder. Now if you simply double click this ISO image, a folder opens and shows you the contents. Behind the scenes, Windows 10 natively supports ISO disk images and actually mounts them as drives instantaneously. Now couldn't I just copy these files to the new folder I made? You would think so, but Windows 10 doesn't like me, so... Remember me whining earlier about WinUAE's error system? Well, how do you like this unspecified error as useful information? So we're going to cancel this and delete these files because I don't know where it left off. 
Fortunately, reading disk images on a PC predates Windows' ability to do so. You just need a utility to perform this task properly. I have been using 7-Zip for years, and it works great on ISO images and all of the archives I've ever thrown at it, including LHA, the most common Amiga archive. And it's free. So we are good to go. Well, not quite. For our next step, let's mount this folder as a hard drive in our Win UAE application. You need to name it Amiga OS 3.9, just as you see it here. Oh, and uncheck the bootable box. Now we are going to boot with a 3.1 floppy, but use the workbench disk this time, not the install disk. I'm not sure why the icon for emergency boot appears here, but no matter. Here's our Amiga OS 3.9 disk. Now we just need to create an emergency boot disk so we can boot from it to install OS 3.9. Just run the install for 3.9 and there's an option for it. It looks like it's doing nothing, but just wait. We need to create a blank disk for the OS 3.9 installer. Press F12 and on the floppy drives page of WinUAE, there's an option to create a blank ADF disk image. We just need to save it somewhere. Then, we can select it for DF1 and return to the Amiga to proceed. Let's just verify it's there by checking the desktop. There it is. So now we can proceed. Here is our new emergency disk. Now we just need to boot from it. Press F12 and eject DF1. And switch DF0 to our new emergency disk. Then click Reset to reboot the Amiga. Now we can see the OS 3.9 environment for the first time. Ignore this emergency whatever. Open the Amiga OS 3.9 drive again and start the installation. We are on the home stretch now.
You may not need to install these. On my A2000, I had to use the ASIM CDFS floppy disk for the CD-ROM driver. And my CD32 didn't require anything. That is it. We are completely done with the install. All we need to do is press F12 and eject TF0 and come back to click Proceed. We are now going to boot from our new Amiga drive with OS 3.9. We're pretty much done. Let's remove the OS 3.9 CD real quick. That stupid emergency boot icon is still stuck there. Let's quickly reboot to get rid of it. One last thing, these icons are looking pretty yucky. Let's just fix that. You want to pick at least 32 colors for these icons. Let's do 64. I always try to be relatively conservative because more colors means more memory used. That looks much better. So now we are ready to start filling our new Amiga drive with goodies. So let's quit Win UAE and move the card to our Amiga. That's going to be it for this video. It has been a monumental task of time and effort and I hope it helps some people. It seems the next logical step would be to make a follow-up video about installing WHD Load. That special software that allows us to play thousands of original Amiga games, including floppy ones that could never be previously installed on a hard drive. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.